Good morning, this is Beck from John Pye Real Estate and thank you for joining me. If this is your first time at one of our live events uh, here on Facebook, um, welcome. And if you are watching the replay, uh, thanks for joining us as well. So what we're gonna do here is that if you have any questions whatsoever, you can type them below in the comments and uh, we'll do our best to answer them. Uh, also, if you are watching the replay, you are very welcome to type your question below and we will get back to you. Um, so if you are here and you wanna say hello, also um, just hit your like button and I'll be able to see that you're here. So just a, let's cover some bases uh, very quickly about accidental damage versus fair wear and tear and what are the different damages when it comes to a rental property. So I have got a really simple um, cheat sheet here that I'm going to give you some examples and also um, if we don't have any live questions, I have got two questions that we have been asked in recent months. Uh, one to do with the bathroom issue and one to do with the kitchen an issue. So I'm going to share with you those questions and also um, our answers to those. So um, from an insurance perspective, so there are four different types of damage. The first one is accidental damage. Um, and of course, this is an unexpected or sudden loss. So what we've got here is generally something that is an accident or not planned uh, or intentional. So examples of these, spills on carpets, um, damage to furniture. The other thing is malicious damage. So damage which was motivated by spite. And as the term malicious uh, in indicates, something that has been done intentionally with malice um, or vindictiveness, um, or in, basically in spite. So the examples of these are holes in walls or holes in doors, uh, graffiti, they're the types of things that malicious damage is. And now if you wanna do a claim for malicious damage, you must uh, lodge a police report for that. So deliberate damage is another form of damage and that is intentional, but it is not done out of spite, malice or vindictiveness. So an example of this, and this is often um, done where someone is wanting to create, their, uh, create more, um, a more homely feel to the property. So an example, and this is a really simple thing to, to keep in mind, picture hooks. So putting up picture, pictures of family members on walls, um, if that's not cleared by the landlord, that is actually considered deliberate damage. The other form is wear and tear. So damage, this is damage which occurs naturally and inevitably. So simply because people reside in a property and this can happen in a landlord's property just as easily um, in their um, investment property. So examples of this, scuff marks on walls or worn carpet in walkways, there are a couple of examples. So if you've got a question, feel free to type it below in the comment section and I will read it out. And as I said, we will answer it live here on Facebook for you. And if we don't know the answer, we will come back to you after doing a little bit of research so that we can get give you exactly um, the right answer. So. To start off with, um, as I mentioned at the beginning, we do have um, we do we have actually been asked a couple of questions from people in the marketplace, and um, I just need to preface this um, with the fact that these two questions come from people who. Questions, but we do not manage their property. They have their own real estate agent, um, and they're not our clients. So I read you to start with I'm going to go through the bathroom example so the question from who's who's right once the tents have just moved out we notice damage to the bathroom that bathroom any of the some tile specialists who don't know what cause repair and a replacement is only the tenants did uh, they didn't do it and I blame I think normal that with products we need to be reasonable and pressuring us to give an amount a replacement is not an option and a tribunal we don't want to go to tribunal but the tenants for a what should we do so uh, we responded in fact so 
So the cleaner all clean product. question what sort of okay. are they cheap foreign import or inferior material or ceramic or porcelain we suggest you make contact with the suppliers of the tiles and find out about the product supplied you could also do some research online to see if anyone else works question ask the agent to find out the name of the cleaning product and advise the tile supplier I would expect the supplier would have Product liability insurance policy, which would pay for the damage should they be at fault. The cleaner is at fault if the incorrect product was used or if the incorrect product was used incorrectly. In this case, the tenant will have to seek damages from the cleaner. Tenant is clearly responsible for hiring the cleaner. Their admission of this is important in your case. If the cleaner used the correct product correctly, then there could be a compensation claim on the supplier of the cleaning product. In this case, the tenant still has to pursue this. Finally, instruct the agent to hold the bond until the matter is resolved. Get quotes for the replacement of the tiles. I'm not sure whether the agent is acting in your best interests here and may have to make a decision to get a new agent in the future. You seem like a very reasonable person who is the victim of someone's negligence. You just have to find out who is responsible. The tenant the t or the tile supplier. We hope this helps, John. So as you can see, these types of things are very involved. Um, it, there's so many facts to consider and it's not a clean cut case with many of these items. Now, we have also just had a um, uh, someone question us about a kitchen, a granite bench top. Here we go. So should you have a question that you'd like us to answer, we're not going to be live for very much longer. Um, we are going to keep these sessions very um, short so that um, they are bite-sized uh, videos that you can watch uh, if you need to watch them back. But we will do this again uh, in the future. So if you don't have a question today and you do want to ask a question, um, feel free to get in touch with us and we'd love to help you. So the bench top, let's talk about that. All right, so two, this is uh, again, not our client. This is someone in the marketplace who has an issue. So he writes, two weeks ago, our tenants vacated. We recently found out that there was a crack on the kitchen black granite bench top and our old agent failed to notice and noted on the in outgoing inspection report. The outgoing inspection report was not signed by the tenants at the time of the final inspection as they were on holidays for two weeks. We had taken photos of the crack and, the, and found that they, there were stains underneath the crack. In your opinion, do you think the tenants are liable for the damage or is this wear and tear? The building is about 15 years old. Now for his um, situation, we needed uh, some extra questions uh, answered and we did get those answers from him. And because uh, we wanted a few extra details, um, namely, one of the questions we asked was, was the condition of the, of the kitchen bench top noted on the ingoing inspection report before the tenants moved in? And did your agent have supporting photos of the bench top? So uh, he has written back, no, the condition of the bench top wasn't noted on the ingoing inspection report and also wasn't noted on the outgoing report as well. There was a photo of the kitchen bench top, but it did not show that part of the cracked area clearly. So our response to that is, uh, in our experience, it comes down to evidence. So evidence of before and evidence after the occupancy. So we are, we are sorry to hear that your agents failed to make note of the condition of the bench top and take photos. This is vital for an ingoing condition report. When a case is taken to NCAT, uh, which is also known as the tribunal, and whether or not that is the NCAT or the equivalent in the state the property is in, often the first piece of evidence that a member will request to see or read is the ingoing condition report and support, supporting photographic evidence. So our suggestion is double check with your agent that, uh, that they, they have any extra photos of the property in their files. And we would encourage you to talk to the principal of the agency and ask them why this was not done prior to the tenants moving in, or if you have been given full representation of the matter. 
Furthermore, you may have a case against the agent as it might be considered negligence. Granite does not crack by itself. You might be able to make a claim. We hope this has been helpful. So you might have a situation like this uh, that you're currently dealing with and you need some help. You're welcome to get in touch with our office, either write a message below or even jump into Messenger and send us uh, an, a message through Messenger, our, our Facebook Messenger, um, John Pye Real Estate Messenger, and we can answer your questions. Um, we have got over 25 years of experience in dealing with these types of things. And sadly, there are a lot of people out there with misinformation. So we've got an incredible case study um, free case study report that we can share with you with case studies of all different um, all different issues that have actually gone into uh, and up against within the tribunal uh, or NCAT and um, it gives evidence as to what is considered fair wear and tear and also what's accident accidental damage. So if you found this helpful today, please let us know. If you need any further service, you're welcome to, as I mes mentioned, send us a messenger message or write a comment below or you can give us a call in our office on 02 9980 So my name's Beck Reed and thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.